Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it Tech Wreck in Full Force. You've seen the headlines. There's a lot of uh, articles been written and a lot of uh, stories on the on the uh, TV, CNBC, etc., about uh, all the different stocks that are getting hit this week. We're going to start off talking about the Nasdaq Composite and the Russell 2000. And then we're going to look at a couple of key indicators. And then I want to look at the XLK uh, sector, the XLK Spider uh, ETF, and see what it's doing and show you where I think it is with the LA Wave picture. I think it's about to roll over. It hasn't really gotten damaged that much yet because Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA account for 51.5% of XLK, and they haven't really broken down like a lot of these tech st other tech stocks have. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter where we look. I mean, we scan down here. Let me just go down into the other area here. Adobe down 8% on Friday. Salesforce.com down nearly 12% on Wednesday. DocuSign down 42% on Friday alone. And Facebook, look how far down it is from the high in September. So a lot of damage going on, but XLK and the top three stocks in the XLK haven't really rolled over hard yet. We'll take a look at that. All right, let's go back and start off here with the NASDAQ composite. So it was down 295 points on Friday and down for 406 for the week. So I'm watching this. Yes, I do believe that the high is in here with the high on November 22nd. Here's the LA Wave picture that I've got. Uh, when we look at the weekly chart, let's just take a look at that first. Okay, I believe that we have five waves up and that we have, you know, a fairly short fifth wave in here, but I do believe we have five waves in that fifth wave and that we are now coming down hard off of that high. And when you take a look and drill, drill in and take a look at the, uh, the daily view, here's a, a channel, what we call an LA wave channel. We connect the bottom of wave two, wave four project from wave three. You can see how wave five bounced right along the tops of this channel, wave three, and, and actually, did I say wave three, wave five, intermediate wave five, okay? Bounced right along the top up here and so did minor wave three within intermediate wave five. And now we've rolled back over and come down. Now what I'm watching is to confirm that we are in the start of a new leg down, we need five waves. We don't have five waves yet, okay? But it looks like, you know, it's, it's underway. Now an interesting target over here is this big gap that's showing up that was created on October 14th. And if we come down and close that gap, it's going to break down out of this channel in the same time that it does that. Now, when I look at the daily wave picture underneath the covers, when I drill down, look at the intraday, uh, like the hourly view, 65 minute view, this is what I'm looking at. I think we have wave one, wave two, and that we are in the process of, uh, you know, forming the wave three to the downside and keep subdividing lower. Now, what I'm looking for, I wouldn't be surprised to see when you get into a wave three of a three is to start seeing gaps down. So we'll be watching for that. Right now, there's a lot of weakness going on. Uh, and let me just show you, since we're on the, the subject of the NASDAQ, let me just show you one of the indicators. Look at the net of the high low. So on Friday, there were... 713 more stocks hitting 52-week lows than highs for the day. That is the lowest since back over here on March, I believe it was March 6th when we had that reading initially of 2020 as part of that whole collapse. And there was only one other time in the last four years, and that was in mid-December of 2018 when that brutal sell-off was going on in December. So yeah, there's a lot of damage underneath the covers in here, a lot of negativity that when you look at and look at the index and say, wow, that kind of damage and we're only sitting right here. Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see if it starts to break down. And the reason I believe that it's like this is because the leadership is very narrow up here. 
But if we start to get some of these leaders really roll over hard, like some of them are starting to, uh, this is going to change. And same thing with the SPX. All right, let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Okay, the Russell 2000 ETF, IWM, was down 2% on Friday. So we got that big bounce up here on, on Thursday, just a little, you know, dead cat type bounce. And then we come back down hard on Friday, down four and a half points, 8.14 for the week, four weeks in a row. So you look at it and say, well, wow, four weeks in a row, maybe we're going to get a bounce. Well, we could be about to get one. Let's take a look at the Elliott Wave picture and I'll tell you what I think is happening. Okay, this big sideways move was indeed a wave four, a very complex sideways wave four that I believe is best labeled a large triangle, A, B, C, D, and E. And the E wave itself was made up of a triangle in here. So the end of the E wave occurred right here on the low of October 13th. Okay, and so that's why we have the trend line. I've got a trend line drawn between the bottom of wave two and the end of wave two, wave four in here. And actually it may be off slightly in terms of the alignment. And so we've had a, a fifth minor wave up that we have now, we've broken that trend line. We've gone below the low of the beginning of wave five. In my mind, this, is, this shows this is complete. We are done with the bull market on the Russell 2000 ETF. And as a matter of fact, I think that we've, with the low on Friday, we may have completed that fifth wave down. So we have five down. We've taken out the wave, the low of the fifth minor wave up. So right now, this looks like the bear is underway in the Russell 2000. And by the way, we got very, very close on the Dow Industrials. And uh, we'll see how that holds this coming week. And so if you take a look and drill in and say, OK, how does this look on the intraday? Here's what I'm looking at. I think there's a pretty good chance that this wave three, look at the collapse that we had, the gap in the wave three, pretty classic in terms of that type of price action. And then we got this wave four right here. And I think we've had like a little ending diagonal pattern for the fifth, the fifth Manu wave which completes five waves down for wave one. We'll watch and see. We're getting a lot of bullish divergence on the RSI with this last move down. Wouldn't be surprised to see us correct whatsoever. And, and when you look at that, and let me look at, so I've got that. Let me, uh, let's just go back over here. Let me do it here. I've already done it actually. Here's, 50, here's a 50% retracement of wave one. Here's 38%. So be watching for the kind of bounce. What do we get? Do we get a classic zigzag for wave two? Do we come all, do we come this far? Do we come to the top of the wave four? Do we close the gap? We'll just have to watch and see what kind of wave structure do we get as a part of this bounce in here. Okay, that is the Russell 2000. We've already look at, looked at the high low on the NASDAQ, which is very, very negative. Let's take a look at the, uh, the VIX and I'll show you what happened on the VIX this week. And let's just go over here. Let me close this. Let's go to my, my classic moving average view that we've got here. Look at the move that happened up 2.72. I was talking about this with the members saying, look, this just looks like it wants to explode out of a major head and shoulders bottom in here. And we got that explosion this week. We'll see if we continue to get the follow through. The high on Friday, 35.32. Let's show you on a weekly view. Here's how it looks on a weekly chart. Okay. It's very similar to the kind of move that happened over here in, you know, at the end of 2017 into January, February, of 2020, did I say 17, 19, sorry, of 2019 into the beginning of 2020 and that huge explosion there in February, March. Okay, so it appears to be underway. We'll see if we continue to get the follow through uh, from this type of uh, activity here, this volatility that's erupted on the VIX. Okay, let's take a look at XLK. 
Okay, here's the Elliott Wave picture I've got for XLK. Coming off that March of 2020 low, I believe we have five waves in, and the divergence between the third and fifth minor wave up here is clearly showing right here on the RSI. I am expecting this to further break down and, uh, and start to roll over and head south. Okay, so when you look at the top three, as I mentioned, holdings within XLK, Apple, Microsoft and NVIDIA accounting for 51.5%. Let's take a look at Apple. Here's the Elliott Wave picture on Apple. And let me zoom back out. 22.63% of XLK is the, uh, the holdings, uh, what Apple accounts for. So right now, I believe that even if we were looking at the fifth primary wave up, from the low in 2016, in May of 2016. And right now, I think that we've gotten that last fifth wave, I believe is complete, even with the high that happened this last week. We've got our five waves up in here, and I am watching for this to roll over and start breaking down like we're seeing in a lot of the other tech stocks. So keep an eye on Apple. Let's take a look at Microsoft. Look at this longer term chart of Microsoft. This is a weekly view from this low back here in March of 2009. I believe that we just completed cycle wave three. Look at this big, strong, basically straight line move that's happened since the low here in January 2013. Or, well, it's not, it wasn't the low, but it was the end of wave two, cycle wave two. Big kind of sideways type move for cycle wave two, okay? And then we had our five moves up, look at, you know, pretty close to the channel in here. And then coming off that low of uh, March, 2020, here's the five waves up that we've got on, uh, on Microsoft. And again, getting very strong divergence between the end of wave three and the end of wave five, which I believe happened the week before last. And so now we are rolling over and breaking down. Now we've gone above the channel up in here. I'm looking for this to start coming back down. I, you know, it's most likely going to break down below this channel. And if I had to pick a zone on this, I'd pick right between this high right here, which is you know, well, let's just see what the high is. The high is 190.70. What's the low? 132.52. So 133 to 191 as a, as a zone for this. We'll see uh, how it looks and how it acts as it starts to come down. But it's just now beginning. All right. So let's take a look at NVIDIA. Okay, NVIDIA is 7.05% of the XLK ETF, but it is the third largest holding. Okay, so 7% of, uh, of the ETF. And I believe that the third cycle wave has just finished with the high that just occurred. Again, this is a weekly view, just like Microsoft, the high that occurred the week before last. So here's why I see, say that. This is all the data that we've got on NVIDIA. This is from when it, be it uh, became public back in January of uh, 1999, I believe, if I got that right. Cycle wave one, cycle wave two, and this cycle wave three is a huge, huge, actually it's not cycle wave, sorry, it's actually super cycle because of the way we've got it labeled. It's really it's my labeling. I could call it cycle wave, call it super cycle. The super cycle fits so that when I drill down, this is the kind of waves we get. Okay, but within that, here's the cycle waves. One, two, and we're coming off the low in 2008. It's interesting how NVIDIA bottomed before the market did back in um, the financial crisis. The low was in November of 2008, not March of 2009. And then Here's the big rally that occurred in here. Look at this third wave. Pretty incredible. It's, it's hard to call that an intermediate wave, honestly. And then you come up and this is, finishes off primary wave three right here. And then we've got this sideways wave four. And then we're done with wave five. 
Okay, so that is the picture that we've got uh, on NVIDIA. And, uh, you know, we're just looking for this to, you know, get close to rolling over. Actually, what I was thinking is, let me show you the daily view here at the end. Here's the, here's the daily view. Here's the picture we've got. And here's from the low in March of 2021. We had a big kind of a sub, big sideways move I was talking about right in here. And then here's the structure up, five waves. We had this channel, and yeah, we burst above that channel in here. And now I'm looking for this to come back down and uh, come back down hard. Okay, so that's the picture on those three. Let me go back and show the NASDAQ. We'll end with the NASDAQ just because that's kind of where we started. And let me show the daily view. And we'll see how this plays out over the next couple of weeks and into the end of the year for sure. All right, if you felt like the video was helpful, hit that little thumbs up there. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, we talk about these every day over at joehenches.net. Check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on the next video.